Today I'll be doing an updated what's in my camera bag video just going through all the camera gear I use um, as of 2023 Hi, welcome back to another video I am JT, I am a freelance photographer based in Singapore The last time I did this video I think it was probably 2021 or even before that I can't quite remember but since then um, some of my gear have changed so first of all, I'll be sharing with you the camera bag that I carry to all my photo shoots. This is the Peak Design Everyday Backpack, I believe. I'll just insert its name here. I've had this for quite a number of years now, so I don't know if it's still the same one as listed on the website, but this has served me well for the past couple of years. So what I like about this bag is that it has the side pockets which you can open and access the bags from the side. So I do put my lenses in like horizontally and then I can just pick them out. So this is also the bag I bring to travel. So I usually have my camera, one lens, one additional lens and then my laptop and all the other like small essentials in the top pocket over here. So yes, this backpack when I'm traveling probably weighs close to 8kg just because of how heavy my camera is and then including the laptop, chargers and all those other things. So, yeah. Um, I am currently using the Canon R5. Um, I got this camera sometime in mid 2021. My then fiance, now husband, gifted it to me as a as an engagement gift. So, yeah. I was literally touched to tears when he gifted me this. Previously, I was using the Canon 5D Mark III, which I covered in my previous camera gear video. Um, yeah, so right now I'm on a mirrorless R system. Love it. So another really exciting thing that's happened to me recently is that I've been appointed as one of Canon's EOS explorers. So I have a shirt here with my name on it, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. So here's the shirt. So if you've been following me, you know that my photography journey basically started with Canon as well. So I think it's just like very very meaningful and extra special that I'm now being recognized by this very same brand. Like I started out with the Canon 5D Mark III which basically is what I used to start my whole photography journey. Um, and then now I'm using the mirrorless R5 system and then... Yeah, even like my vlogging camera is Canon, like the Canon G7X. This is my certificate, which I feel is very, very cool. <laughs> I guess it just fix my relationship with Canon official for the next year. And then obviously on my camera, I have the Peak Design straps, which I've also used for quite a while. Um, so yeah, I really love it. And usually on my photo shoots, I actually don't use a strap because I feel like they, de they get in my way. I tend to just shoot um, without the strap on a regular shoot day. Yeah, so I'll just hold it like this. And then this is obviously the attachment I have for my tripod that I don't really take off because this is the only camera I use my tripod anyway. So I just kind of leave it on. Okay, and then we go into lenses. The very first one I owned is obviously the Canon 28-70 to f2 lens. My husband got them together as a set. So that's been my setup for basically since 2021 up to 2023. So almost two years now, that's the kind of setup I've been using for all of my photo shoots. And I really think this 28-70 to f2 lens is a very, very versatile lens. Um, basically, since I've owned this lens, I haven't felt a need to reach for any other lenses. Um, yeah, I feel like the only focal length I'm probably missing is the 70 to 200 mm, and I'll probably use that for events on any other regular day, any other regular shoots. The 28 to 70 serves me well, well enough. Especially love the aperture that goes as wide as f2, which means yeah, you get creamy enough bokeh if I'm like zooming all the way to 70 mm to to shoot with. Mm, so yeah, major love. The only con is probably how huge it is. Um, if I bring it traveling with me, it definitely causes a lot of aches if I'm walking around a lot. Um, yeah, but other than that, major love. I've owned this literally less than a week, but this is the Canon 50mm f1.2. Um, really, really love this lens. I actually loaned this from Renticulous. 
um, for my Korea trip in March this year and I love the lens so much if you're comparing the sizes between these two lenses you can tell that the Canon 50mm is definitely a lot smaller so I opted for this when I was walking around um, Seoul and also Jeju for my, for my travels so this was really nice to have and I think 50mm is versatile enough of a focal length for me to shoot um, people, landscapes and also whatever other miscellaneous things I, want, I would like to take a photo of. Honestly, ever since buying this less than a week ago, I've been using it for my shoots already and I don't know, just comparing the two, I feel like for events, I'll definitely use more of the 28 to 70 just, to, just because I think having a zoom lens um, is probably a lot more practical. Um, like depending on where I'm standing, I might have to get a wider shot or a closer shot and it being an event, I might not have the time to think too much about framing my shot and moving where I'm standing as much or as quickly. Um, whereas if it's a portrait shoot, couple shoot, um, maybe the 50mm could be a better choice. I do like that the aperture goes as wide as f1.2. It's something I really missed. Um, having used the 28 to 70 for the past like two years uh, because previously with my old setup as i shared in my previous camera gear video i was using the sigma 35 mm f 1.4 1.8 uh yeah so i really did miss having a prime lens in my collection and then now that i have it yeah i'm very happy no regrets at all um, this is the EF 16 to 35 mm lens. It's as wide as f 2.8. This is the only lens I've carried on from my previous setup to this current camera setup. I am still missing like a really wide angle lens um, in my current lens collection. So I think in cases where I feel I need a really wide angle shot, the 16 to 35 never fails me. And the funny thing is this used to be my biggest lens in my collection. I used to think like, whoa, it's so huge. But now comparing it to like the 28 to 70, this is no big deal. <laughs> and I also did have to get an extender, EF to RF extender. So I can continue using my EF lenses on my mirrorless camera. Um, this I got on Carousel, I believe. I bought it from another photographer. Um, I am filming this video on my Canon G7X Mark II. Um, I have thought about getting the Mark III, but as of now, I don't think I'm ready for such a commitment because I don't think I film videos enough to justify like spending almost a thousand dollars on a new camera. But we'll see because I really like that the G7X Mark III has a input for the mic, whereas the Mark II doesn't. But that being said, this camera has served me well enough when I go traveling, for vlogs, for simple like behind the scenes videos. Like basically any other video you've seen on my YouTube channel is filmed either on my iPhone or like this camera. And if you don't want to put in too much thought as to like what camera settings to use and everything when you're taking travel photos, just get a point and shoot camera like the G7X. It's really perfect. Okay, and if we are talking about what's in my camera bag, let me just go through it and tell you what else I bring along on my photo shoots. Okay, so this is really a life changer for me. This is a iPhone mount for the camera. It's an iPhone hot shoe mount. Um, yeah, so it goes on top of my camera like this and I screw it tight. And then I basically put my iPhone here and I get to shoot all the behind the scenes while I'm taking my photos. So it gives you like almost the same view as your camera is getting. So it's really cool for behind the scenes like edits. I used this when I was shooting in Jeju. Um, because I thought being in a foreign country, I probably shouldn't be leaving my phone on the ground and then like walking away to get behind the scenes. So I had my phone attached to my camera at all times. And then, yeah, it comes right off. Okay, and I hate to admit this, I do bring around a cleaning kit, but I don't really use it very much. I probably should. So in my cleaning kit, I have the... I don't know what to call it. Just for you to blow the dust away. Um, I have a little brush to like brush out any dust. I mean, it's always dust, right? And then I have a little like cloth just to wipe the lens and make sure it's all clean. 
and we don't have any stains or fingerprints on my lens so make sure all the photos are sharp and crisp my shades i bring it for every shoot because i'm always shooting outdoors and under the bright sun so i do this to protect my eyes but that being said um, i also can't shoot with sunglasses on i usually just wear my sunglasses up on my head just a way to keep my hair out of my face during a photo shoot and funnily enough i always loan these sunglasses to my clients when i feel like a pair of shades could level up the photo or the vibe we're going for and then i have this little pouch with me if you can't really tell i'm a fan of rila kuma <laughs> you can see like one here one there um yeah and then i have a little rila kuma pouch i use this to store like tiny knickknacks i use for photography i did also share this in my previous camera gear video this is a triangular prism this is a more like crystal teardrop prism so i typically use these on the side of my lens to block out any things in the background or foreground i don't really want to see in a photo um, or also if i just want to add a little spice to the photo and yeah i think it's been a great addition i don't use it as much now just because my camera setup is so heavy i just cannot afford to free up one hand to hold, hold on to a prism but I keep them in my bag in case a situation ever arises where I need to use them. On more camera gear, my camera body obviously will have a battery in it already. And then on the side, I have two more extra batteries. Um, yeah, just in case. I probably just need the one, but you never know. Something interesting too, I have like a pair of wired earphones in my bag. Um, I brought this along because a while back, um, I think it was for a couple shoot. We just wanted to use wired earphones for simply for the vibe, you know. Like I just like the idea of wired earphones. So I kind of have this in my bag just for that vintage look. Sometimes I'll carry like tissue paper with me um, because if you're shooting outdoors in Singapore, the weather does get pretty unbearable. So my clients tend to be like sweating a lot. Sometimes we just need to like do a little pat across the face just to make sure we're not shiny in the photos oh and i forgot one more thing i always bring to my photo shoots is actually my changing tent i think i have multiple videos where i've shown how i open it up and fold it back down and how it brings much convenience to all my clients who wish to change outfits like or multiple times like throughout a photo shoot um, i used to have to limit myself to photo locations where we have access to a bathroom and things like that so we can keep going in to change but now that i have a changing tent which i charge my clients a small rental fee for um yeah we are no longer restricted by whether or not a location has a public bathroom for us to change outfits in we can just change our outfits wherever we want so long as i have the space to set up my tent and i think it's great um it's pretty compact as well i don't think it's that dramatic honestly the best thing i could offer my clients for additional lighting, I am mostly a natural light photographer. I shoot mostly outdoors, so I'm usually not really short on light when I'm shooting. Um, but in the case um, like weddings uh, or like indoor, any indoor sessions, maybe in an indoor studio, I have a simple Canon speed light. This is the 430 EX2. Um, it's just a very basic flash that I bought off Carousel, I think maybe one or two years back. Um, this is battery operated, so I always clear my batteries out if I'm not using them. So it uses four AA batteries. So if I'm not using them, I usually just keep them in a spare pocket in my Peak Design backpack. I typically use this flash for weddings when I'm taking group photos like table to table. I just think it's a very good way just to keep all the lighting consistent throughout all the group photos and it just makes it easier to edit. Yeah, for portrait shoots or couple shoots, I really... I don't think I've ever used a flash except for this one shoot I did which was completely in the dark. Um, we went to a rooftop car park at night. The point was just to get flash photos. So yeah. And other than that, I was gifted the Zhiyun um, 5 Ray M40. Um, so I have two of these um, but I'm just showing you one. 
So this is what it looks like. It's really, really bright. I recently posted a reel uh, not too long ago about how I used this during a experimental shoot with Rochelle in a studio. So it's quite fun like experimenting with artificial lights because I've never done so. So yeah, you can tell it's like super bright. Um, yeah, so I really love this and who knows, like maybe we'll get more occasions where I'll get to put this to use. I, I might even use this to light up my YouTube videos in the future. But yeah, I really like this and it's very lightweight, it doesn't get hot, um, which is what I really love about it. So it's very easy just to bring it around, like right after you're done using it, you can just turn it off and just throw it right back in your bag. And yeah, there's no problems. Okay, and aside from things I use for photo shoots, I thought I'd show you things that I use behind the scenes as well as a photographer. So these are the SD cards I use. I use the SanDisk um, SD cards for all of my shoots. I usually have one CF Express card and then one SD card. And I've learned that the important thing to note is the reading speed on the cards, especially if you like doing action shots like I do. All those action shots require high speed. Um, continuous shoot mode and if your memory card um, doesn't have a high enough reading speed to keep up with the speed of your shoot mode um, yeah you might just have that lagging effect on your camera and you'll have to wait for it to respond and wait for the images to load before you can show your client what you got this one I have is 200 MB per second so that works great for me. Right when I come back from a photo shoot, I would back up my photos with my... This is the SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD. This is the one I use. I have a 4TB one and also a 2TB one. So these are usually where I put my working files. Um, I don't store anything on my MacBook in general. So everything I have is either on my portable SSD or the Seagate hard drive that I use to back up everything. I usually transfer all my photos from the SD card to the portable SSD through my MacBook and then from there I make a spare backup copy on my Seagate hard drive and then this is the SSD that I work off on. Um, yeah, when I'm editing on Lightroom or everything and then once I delivered the photos and the client has received them, they're happy with it, I'll update whatever I have here and replace the backup files I transferred into my hard drive and then I'll just clear it out of my working SSD. Okay, and that is all that I have to share. I hope you liked watching this video. I think it was very interesting just going through everything I currently use. There are definitely still similarities from my previous video but at the same time, I think a lot has also changed. So yeah, I mean if you haven't watched my previous one, you can still go watch that to see what I started out with which I think is probably quite interesting if you're a beginner too. So I hope you like this video and if you have any questions related to my gear and stuff like that, please let me know. Um, I'll be more than happy to share. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!